The other major topic that I want to discuss today is our vaccination campaign. As I mentioned earlier, as a starting point, 108,924 doses have been administered in Rhode Island. And unlike what's been stated in other states, we can confidently say we have really focused on getting it to our most vulnerable Rhode Islanders. We know that there are more that we need to get the vaccine to, and as supply comes, we're laser focused on being able to do that. But we want to recognize the large groups of vulnerable Rhode Islands who are at highest risk that we have been able to get vaccinated, well over 100,000. We crossed this 100,000 doses mark on Sunday. It is a great accomplishment that has taken an enormous amount of coordination, particularly when you're focused on really getting at the individuals who need it the most. A lot of people deserve a thank you, starting with the vaccinators, other health care providers, our mayors and town managers, other leaders in all the municipalities throughout the state. And I really want to lift up our RIDO and state vaccination team. They have been working tirelessly. Alicia Mahalikas, Trisha Washburn, so many of our partners on a massive team of individuals who care, who are committed. They don't always get the limelight and oftentimes get the hard parts of what's gone on, but I will continue to call all of them out as my heroes for helping to push us through this very critical time. We are regularly looking at our inventory of vaccine and are evaluating how we can get more people vaccinated more quickly. We know that that's critical. We know that that's what is important for us as well as for Rhode Islanders, especially for our older adults, and know that we are laser focused on moving that forward. One example of how we are being agile and continually looking to see how we can improve is that we were able to free up roughly 5,000 doses of vaccine for municipalities to begin vaccinating people who are 75 years of age and older last weekend. I want to pause a moment to really reflect on that. Our initial goal was to start vaccinating once we had that supply a week or so from now, that group of people. And we knew that wasn't soon enough, but given what we were getting from a supply standpoint, that was the time frame. However, with continuing to assess and reanalyze and measure every single dose and make sure that none were going to waste, we were able to pull together enough of these vaccines to be able to start vaccinating 75 and older earlier. And we looked around our state to say, what's the best way to get this out quickest? We know how critical our municipal partners are. And they were already working on the plan to get going by mid-February. And instead of the vaccines just waiting on the shelf for that time, we turned to them and said, let's do this together. And it was bumpy and it was rough. Many of you heard about it during the week. But all in all, with a short period of uh, time, advance notice, we have been able to vaccinate 5,000 individuals, 75 and older, who otherwise wouldn't have gotten it at this time, would have gotten it a couple of weeks later. But it's an example to show, even if it's bumpy, even if it can be frustrating, we're going to do whatever it takes with our partners to make sure every individual at highest risk can get vaccinated as quickly and as early as possible. We know that getting this population of 75 and older vaccinated quickly is critical, which is also why many people 75 and older started getting vaccinated in congregate settings several weeks ago. It's important to know we're not just starting 75 and older now, we've been doing it for weeks. We're now continuing to expand to the additional groups of 75 and older. 
Because getting this population vaccinated quickly is critical, we are enormously appreciative of the creativity, flexibility, determination, and hard work that the cities and towns have put in over this last week and weekend. The storm on Monday caused us to have to do some rescheduling, but on Saturday and Sunday, almost 4,000 Rhode Islanders 75 years of age and older got their first doses of COVID-19 vaccine, and that's fantastic news, and we've been able to push out all of the vaccine that we have found from that. Because we knew that it was bumpy, given that short notice, and because we want to prepare for continuing to do this as quickly and effectively as possible for when we had originally scheduled to starting mid-February, we have been using the lessons learned from that experience, meeting with the cities and towns throughout this week with the Lieutenant Governor McKee's leadership and their partnership, and we're gathering feedback in real time and are looking ahead to how we can continue to get Rhode Islanders vaccinated in the most efficient and equitable way possible. Okay, so last week I spent a lot of time talking about the who. Who will get vaccinated and in roughly what order, what is phase two going to look like, what's the overall timeline. That was so that everyone could have an understanding of who was coming next. If you recall, the approach we are taking is a data-driven, science-driven strategy using a framework of age, high-risk conditions, and geography. I will reiterate that this approach aligns directly with the input from our federal partners, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and with the input from our excellent subcommittee on COVID-19 vaccine, who are all committed experts who uh, know the latest on the data and the science and what's needed at the community level to help drive us forward. Thank you to that committee you're going strong, we're going to continue working with you and relying on your input to help make this as effective as possible. We talked about the who last week. Today, I would like to talk about the where, the when, and the how for vaccinating going forward. In this regard, there will be some similarities to our approach to testing. There are many different locations throughout the state where you can go now to get tested for COVID-19. Not all of these testing sites are managed by the state. However, we do have a set of state-run testing sites and there's uh, a place to go online if you want to get tested at a state-run site, which is portal.ri.gov and we still encourage everyone to go there. But there are also multiple other types of testing sites. You can get it through your provider and you can go through other more locally run sites as well. We've also connected with pharmacies for testing. That, the success of that approach, again, we tested over 110,000 people last week. That success, that framework is what we want to bring to vaccinations. I'll also remind our lessons learned with testing. We came upon a bumpy part with testing, uh, you know, halfway through the pandemic as cases began to rise further, where our test turnaround time was slow. And it was tough because we wanted it quicker. Rhode Islanders wanted it quicker. We were hearing about how frustrating it was that it was taking so long. And we promised and said, we hear you, we agree, we are working on it and we will get it better. And all of you can attest to the fact that now for weeks, if not months, our test turnaround time consistently is two days or less. We heard you. We knew it needed to improve. We worked on it, we did, and it has consistently improved. I want to give you that as the approach for how it will work with vaccines. We know that it's bumpy. We know our vaccine supply is low. We know that we're building out more partnerships on how to get vaccines out better, faster, uh, more effectively. 
And it's tough right now, just like when that test turnaround time was taking a week or so. But we are confident that it will get better. You can trust, given what we have shown in the past, that we hear you, we know it, we're working on it, and we will continue to focus on that until consistently everyone is getting the vaccines that they need. We also know that over time from the feds, the supply will increase. We're making sure that we are ready for that surge. So there's a lot going on right now, and I want to make sure you continue to hear the good news of how we're going forward and can think back to the success that we have overcome in the past, knowing that we will do that here. Vaccinating in Rhode Island is going to use a similar model as what we have used with testing. There are going to be three main types of places where people will be able to get vaccinated. The first location where vaccine will be available will be retail pharmacies. In the near term, that's going to mean CVS and Walgreens vaccinating people who are 75 years of age and older, although we expect multiple additional pharmacies to come on board as well. So here's the good news with vaccinations. 14 different Walgreens locations will start administering shots starting next Tuesday. The registration process will start Sunday morning between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. This is for individuals who are 75 years of age and older. You can schedule by going to walgreens.com or calling your local Walgreens directly starting Sunday. Earlier this week, CVS also announced that vaccine will be available for 75 years of age and older at several sites in Rhode Island, also starting next week. They will start vaccinating at sites in Providence and Johnston on Sunday, and you can start scheduling this weekend as well. To register, also go to CVS.com or call your local CVS starting Saturday. We expect additional announcements from additional pharmacies very soon. This is an example of how we want to set a system up that will make vaccination as accessible as possible. A key thing to understand about the vaccinating happening in pharmacies is that the same timeline and eligibility requirements will be in place regardless of the approach to vaccinating. The same age, high-risk conditions, and geography framework will be used to determine who is eligible for an appointment, whether it's this first location type of pharmacies or, or whether it's one of the other two that I'm going to get into next. So for example, when the pharmacies start vaccinating, they will be vaccinating people who are 75 and older. When additional age groups become eligible statewide, those same age groups will be eligible for appointments at pharmacies. A key is going to be, regardless of the where, regardless of any of these three locations, we're going to advance forward in a coordinated statewide approach. The second type of place where people will get vaccinated is what we are calling local and regional vaccination sites. These will include the community clinics run by cities and towns like what happened so effectively this last weekend because all of the vaccines that we pushed for got out into the arms of individuals 75 and older. These local and regional vaccination sites are going to be an important part of our vaccination infrastructure. For example, similar to how 5,000 doses were made available to the cities and towns last weekend like that, we have planned 7,000 doses total will be going to cities and towns each week for four weeks starting the week of February 14th. All the cities and towns will then get second doses to vaccinate the people who received first doses. To clarify, that means 7,000 doses a week 
divided by all the cities and towns based on population, not 7,000 doses to each city and town. I say this to emphasize that we are still only receiving a very limited supply of vaccine each week when you look at the entire population that we want to vaccinate. Scheduling will vary by city and town for these doses. One last note on where people will get vaccinated. We are working on plans now with home care agencies so homebound people can get vaccinated. Accessibility is a priority for us. That undergirds our core principal focus on equity. We're going to make sure that everyone who wants to get vaccinated will be able to get vaccinated. The third type of place where vaccination will occur, first is pharmacies, second is our local and regional vaccination sites. The third type is our state-run vaccination site. These sites aren't yet open. We expect them to be open later this month as more vaccines come into Rhode Island. This is going to be our focus for demonstrating our ability to surge quickly. If we suddenly get additional vaccines, we will have these large sites state-run that are ready to accelerate getting vaccines out to as many individuals as possible. Strategically, we are not going to open these sites until we have enough vaccine to run these as mass vaccination clinics. We eventually expect to stand up between five and ten state-run sites throughout Rhode Island. We already have uh, one or two that are up and running, but as we expand it for the public, we definitely are ready to expand beyond that. So to summarize where people can get vaccinated, there will be three types of locations. Pharmacies, local and regional sites, and state-run sites. We've created a dispersed system like that intentionally. Again, learning from what we knew, what we know worked successfully with testing. We want there to be many different access points because we want to be ready for when we are getting enough vaccine to vaccinate everyone who wants to get vaccinated. When you think about how many CVS and Walgreen pharmacies that are out there and the other pharmacies that we will ultimately expand to, that's a major way to make sure that there is the accessibility that's needed. And just being able to go to CVS.com and Walgreens.com and other places like that will be key. Because we are still only getting a limited amount of vaccine, relatively speaking, each week, the three channels that I described today will get stood up incrementally. The big news story for today is pharmacies are getting started this weekend. But when we are getting our max amount of vaccine each week, we don't want there to be any bottlenecks. So we'll keep pushing it out through the pharmacies. We'll continue to engage our local and regional connections as best and most efficiently as possible. And we'll absolutely push to the max our mass vaccination sites that are state run. The next thing I want to address with vaccines is the how. Talked about the where. We have three sites. There are going to be ways to access in those three ways. And now I want to talk about how people will be able to sign up to get vaccinated. Again, people can think about this like testing. It works. There are a variety of systems. People just tap into what works best for them. There are many ways to get a COVID-19 test right now in Rhode Island. However, if you want to get a test through the state's testing program, there's a centralized place where you can register online. If you don't want to go through the state route to get tested, there are other approaches for being able to do that. For the state-run sites, similarly, for vaccines, you will go online and register if you are eligible and an appointment will be 
made available um, on a first come first serve basis. We will also have a phone line that you will be able to call for appointments if registering online is a challenge for you. We know that that's a critical point, and so we're doing that at the pharmacies level, are supporting our local and regional approaches to make sure that accessibility is taken care of, and we'll also be doing it with the statewide approach. You will also be able to make an appointment for someone else, such as a family member. When the registration period opens for your group, it will be first come, first serve. As more vaccines come in, more appointments will be open. And to be clear, there are currently no appointments available to the public yet at the state-run sites. Again, those are more of the mass vaccination clinics. And as we get more doses enough to really feed the vaccines out through that route, we will then be ready to push it there ready to surge at any moment that we need to. We would welcome that challenge. We expect that people who are 75 years of age and older will be able to start registering for clinics through the statewide approach closer to the middle of the month. This will be when we have enough vaccine to start operating those larger clinics. As we get closer to that point, we will provide people with the website and phone number that people will be able to use. So similar to testing, we're gonna want to layer on the options that are available. I wanna say up front that people should be prepared to not get an appointment right away necessarily. We recognize that this will be frustrating. It's frustrating for us too. It's happening in states across the country, but taking the first come first serve approach has been seen in multiple areas as likely the most efficient way and quickest way to push vaccine out. We are one of the states that are taking multiple layers at doing that so that we can cover um, from a variety of perspectives the pharmacies, the state-run approach, as well as the local and regional approaches. Right now, we are only getting a little more than 16,000 first doses of vaccine a week. It increased from 14,000 just within the last week or so. But it's important to know that that 16,000 compares to the 80,000 people in Rhode Island who are 75 and older. A portion of them have already begun being vaccinated over the last several weeks for those living in congregate settings or other assisted living settings. But there is a remainder that's way more than the 16,000 a week that we're getting. We are hopeful that more vaccine will start coming into Rhode Island, but the 16,000 first doses a week is the reality that we have to live with right now and plan for for the time being. Everything I've just said pertains to getting information about eligibility and registering to get vaccinated at a state-run vaccination site. As I said earlier, and will continue to share, there are going to be multiple ways, the state-run version, the pharmacy version, and the local regional approach. For the pharmacy, how? The registration process for pharmacies is going to be distinct. To register, you will go to the pharmacy's website, as I said earlier, However, you will only be able to register if you are eligible at that time, and that eligibility will stay the same across all three approaches. Registration for the local and regional vaccination clinics will be site-specific. For example, many cities and towns have their own lists of people to contact. They will still use those lists for regional and local clinics. Separately, as I did last week, I wanna share a quick note on testing and a quick note on treatment so that it's clear our overall focus for getting us through the remainder of this response is vaccination, testing, and treatment. 
on testing, we currently have more capacity than ever. We have testing locations in almost every city and town throughout Rhode Island, and you can make same-day appointments at many of them at portal.ri.gov. Getting tested every week is fast, it's easy, it's free, and it's more important now than ever, particularly with the potential for the new strains of COVID-19 in circulation. So I recommend to everyone to consider getting tested every week. And lastly, a plug for treatment. If you test positive for COVID-19, and if you are 65 or older, or have an underlying health condition at any age, immediately call your healthcare provider and ask about treatment for COVID-19 that is available for you. If you don't have a healthcare provider, it is still available for you. To learn more, go to covid.ri.gov backslash treatment. At some sites, you can find out how to access treatment. At, at that site, you can find out more how to access treatment if you don't have a doctor. We have been seeing great results with patients who are getting treated, and we have plenty of supply in Rhode Island. Treatment is one of our key tools to keeping people out of the hospital and keeping people alive, just like our approach with vaccination. Before opening things up for questions, I want to mention the Super Bowl. Many of you may not know I'm a huge football fan, so it's a big day. I know a lot of people are excited for the big game, this particular one. I am too. I'm definitely going to be watching the Bucks and the Chief, but I'm going to be watching just with the people that I live with. The social gathering size in Rhode Island is still just your household. Please come up with additional ways to celebrate or watch in awe creatively. Watch a game virtually together with another household. But keep it small, keep it simple, and just watch the game in person with the people that you live with. 